the most healthy thing you can do for yourself, for your own sanity, and I think for your results is to determine ahead of time before you put on that trade. Just look at what the worst case scenario is and really get it into your head what you're going to do if that happens. I can't tell you how many times I have known this and still had it bite me in the ass. And it's really painful when it does. So for instance, if even though you get in something, so it, it, you get in something and you think, you know, oh, I'm, I'm risking one to make three, but really you could just make that shit up by looking at the chart and say, well, you know, if it goes below 19, I'm wrong. And my target is 23. So I'm buying it at 20. So I'm risking one to make three. And anyone can say that, but is that actually true? And you have to you have to consider that when you're laying out that logic kind of in your own head. And one of the things that has popped up with me again and again is when I go on a good stretch, I start dropping my guard and forgetting about how how important that is because I've been winning and I think, well, you know, I'm I'm so comfortable, I have a lot of money in this trade, and then all of a sudden, you know, some news headline comes or whatever and it, it's threatening to me and it comes back down and then I'm kind of frozen and then you know, all of a sudden you're discussing in your own head what to do with it. And before you know it, your loser gets out of hand. So constantly thinking about what happens when it goes wrong. There has to be a point, no matter what you're doing or how you justify your strategy, there's got to be a point where you just pull the cord and you got to get out. And if you're outright trading during the day, it's really simple. But if you're doing options and your situation is more scaling in and scaling out, it can get more complex. And when it gets more complex, then you start talking to yourself in your head about justifying, well, you know, I'm going to get out of some and I'm going to wait on the rest. And that might all be fine if you're sized appropriately. And here's the other thing is I think even the greatest traders break their rules all the time. No one's going to always follow their rules. But the reason you make these rules is because they give you a roadmap for what usually works and what's successful. But the beauty of sizing correctly is if you're size medium to small, you can break your rules and get away with it and manage the trade and not blow up. So, you know, you could be short something that goes a little too far and then eventually comes back your way and is a good trade. And because you were trading three times smaller, you're able to absorb that. And then when it comes back in the money, maybe you add to the trade. And, and you can do things like that when you're trading small. It's like, but it, you know, it's the same thing of, I don't want to make an analogy that's, that's stupid, but it's like getting in a lie with someone where you start telling little white lies and all of a sudden you build an elaborate story and, and you can't dig yourself out of it and you start believing the lie yourself. And now it's almost like you can't get out of it. Whereas if you just said something small and then right away corrected it and said, you know what, I, I said that and it wasn't true and you back out and you're, it's trading big is the same way. When you get really big and you get stuck, it's like being caught in that lie and you just feel like you keep digging yourself in and it's just best to cut the cord and get out. So there's got to be a way ahead of time where you determine where that is and it is going to save you so much if you can stick to that, even when you're doing well and it hasn't happened in a while.